Welcome back to Honest News. I'm going to prove to you by the scriptures this morning that Zionism, the doctrine of Zionism, the ideology of Zionism, has nothing to do with the Jews or the Gentiles. It's about war. It's about war. It's about greed. Uh, it's about power. It has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with annihilation. It has to do with destruction. See, Satan is not really concerned about religion. He's concerned about a bloodbath. He's concerned about bringing the world to a place where souls are dying, where people are dying, see, and where souls are going to hell. He wants to create on this earth worse than Hitler, a Holocaust worse than Hitler. Because the ultimate plan is not to wipe out the seed of Abraham as far as physical, but to wipe out the seed of Christ off the earth. Think about this. Once the bride is gone and then the church is taken, the seed of Christ, there's only a remnant left. And these are the foolish virgins that have no oil. And they will be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then there'll be the remnant left in Israel that have yet to be born again. Think about this. What is it that the devil's really after? He's after souls, right? That's what he's after. To take as many souls to hell as he can. What's the greatest way to do that? War. War. But see, he doesn't want you to be saved when you die. Right? He doesn't want you to be born again when you die. If you die. He wants you to be unsaved. And this is why the serpent teaches false doctrine. To get people away from the truth. And this is where we get the doctrine or the, the lie from Satan of Zionism. Zionism has nothing to do with the Jews, has nothing to do with that. In fact, I will prove to you, folks, Hitler was a Zionist. That's right. And how many know Zionism comes out of the Catholic Church? How many know that? Zionism has nothing to do with the Jew or the Gentile. And it has everything to do with world dominance. Has everything to do with war. War. That's why you see the one percenters in the United States with the Catholic Church supporting Hitler. So when you think of Nazism, don't think of those that hate Jews. Think of those that desire to have war, which is what John Hagee is. They're supremists. Are you listening? And they support a supremist in the White House. This is supremacy, supremacy. That's what they're after, dominance. It's not about a religion. It's not about ideology in that sense. Let's, let's take a look at what the Scripture says about this man of sin, this antichrist figure that's coming on the earth. Let's see what kind of a individual this person's going to be, or this beast, or this individual is going to be. Let's take a look. Let's see if it has anything to do with religion. Daniel chapter 11, beginning with verse 36. And the king shall do according, notice it says he's a king. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself. 
and magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that that it is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all gods. Now listen. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. That's war, people. That's war. The God of forces. This is Satan, the God of war, the, the, the God of this world that is, the, that is for destruction. That's what Satan is. He's destruction. Okay? But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. Isn't, isn't it interesting? Another forerunner of this man of sin, of this wicked Donald Trump, now having the Space Force. You got the Air Force, now the Space Force. And it says, this wicked, this man of sin, is going to honor the God of forces. What's that saying? That's saying that he regards no God, no deity, and his God is, is his weapons. Think about that. Think about that. Now you look at somebody like Donald Trump and you think about John Hagee calling for war with Iran. And now you look at Benjamin Netanyahu, they're all for war. That is Zionism, folks. You hear what I'm saying to you? That's Zionism. It's not about getting rid of Muslims. It's about annihilation of the population of the earth. Who's behind that? Who's behind that madness? Why would man want to annihilate or to wipe off the earth people? Why? And even destroy himself. Why would man do that? Why would a person commit suicide? Because there's a serpent behind it all. The destroyer. He doesn't care about people. He doesn't care whether you're black, white. He doesn't care uh, what your uh, religion is. He doesn't care about all that. What he cares about is making sure that you're lost when he takes you to hell. Now are you getting the big picture, folks? See, the, the, the distraction in the seduction and the illusion that the devil plays against the world is He tries to get people confused with doctrines and religions and viewpoints and all these things. But ultimately, what does it come down to? It comes down to God, right? The God of heaven. And it comes down to Satan, the God of war. That's what it ultimately comes down to. And it comes down to this. Whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the right? Not the right as far as the right and left and as far as Satan's hypocrisy in politics. I'm talking about where the Bible says, the Lord says those on his right are going to enter into life, but those on his left will be cast into hell and lake of fire. Are you on the right or on the left? It's come down to this place where the Lord is going to divide the sheep from the goats, brothers and sisters. Isn't it interesting how these Zionists, these Satanists, the synagogue of Satan that worship the devil and they're going to worship the beast. How is that? I mean, do you not see it? How is it that they use a goat to represent themselves? A goat. They're putting these statues up right now in many cities around this United States. That goat represents that rebellious, stubborn, fallen nature. Are you listening? That is is what the Bible considers 
that goat nature, that, that stubbornness, that goes all the way to the scripture where it says God will divide the goats from the sheep. Are you listening? They have that goat nature. They have that fallen nature. They have that stubborn and that rebellious nature. And they're not ashamed of it. In fact, they call their rebellion, they call it revolution. Are you listening? In fact, Satan, he put in the Constitution when it was amended the right to bear arms so that he could cause people to rise up against their government. Why would he want that? War. War. What did Jesus do when he was arrested in the garden? Did he fight? Did he fight with a sword? No, he laid his life down. That is God's plan for us to lay our lives down. See, Satan's plan is get you to fight with swords, get you to fight with guns, get you to defend yourself. He's war, war. But what did Jesus say? Put up your sword. Put up your sword. I know you don't want to hear Brother Joseph give that message. You don't want to hear the truth because you want to fight. You want a war, don't you? Well, that's the devil. He wants you to war. He wants you to fight. Even James says, where are there wars among you? Come they not of your own lusts? Come they not out of your lusts? You war, you fight, you kill, you desire to have and you cannot obtain? He calls them children or he calls them uh, friends of the world. He calls them, adult he calls them adulterers and adulteresses. Friendship with the world. Warmongers, anybody that is on the side of uh, supporting war is, a, is part of the Zionism. And all that Islam is doing, okay, is the same thing. And it's, it's survival to them. They're just trying to, they're just trying to survive in the sense that uh, we're going to come out on top. We're, we're not going to be destroyed. We're not going to. So they're trying to gain uh, Russia and, and other countries. You see what's, it's like king of the hill here. It's like survivalist. You see what I'm saying? It's like the, 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 what they call the survival of the fittest. That's Satan's world. But brothers and sisters, it, you and I are not to fight. We're not to war. We're not to join those that want war. And, and, and so when you have politics that are wanting to war against other countries, folks, I don't think you understand that these sanctions against China and China giving warning to the United States, we are in right now a war with China and Russia already. We're already at war. Sanctions are an act of war. We've been at war with Russia and China since we've been at war. Okay, and so we're just getting closer and closer to an actual nuclear war. It's already, we're already at war when it comes to money. These sanctions that are getting ready to be put on China, that's not going to help the American people. It's going to be more expensive for us to buy things. Why do you idiots out there believe Donald Trump when he tells you that sanctioning China is going to help things? The very person you voted into office is destroying this country. He's not making it a great again. He's destroying this country the same way he destroyed himself. If it wasn't for the international bankers, he'd still be destroyed. He would still have no uh, wealth. He would still not even be, he wouldn't even be president today if it wasn't for the international bankers. And the international bankers, folks, don't think about Jews and Gentiles. Think about Zionism, Satan's. That's Satan's lie, Zionism. And you've got Zionists that are Jews and you've got Zionists that are Christians. Well, those people that are Zionist Christians like the John Hagees and the Paula Whites, all that stuff, Kenneth Copeland, they're not real Christians. Those are the Catholic Christians, the ones that support the Catholic Church. It's Zionism is of the devil. See how clever Satan is to take a name that God gave to his people in the Old Testament? Zion, right? Zion. I don't think you folks understand that Zion is the city 
of David. It became the city of David. And it has nothing to do with Jerusalem. It has everything to do with Judea. Do you understand? David took the stronghold. Look it up yourself. It was the city where the Jebusites were, okay? And David took the stronghold and he made it his city and it was called the city of David. Are you listening? And this was not in Jerusalem where what is being called the city of Jerusalem today. Listen, this is Judea. Are you listening? It's Judea. It's the land of Judea. That's where Jesus Christ in Bethlehem of Judea, that's where he was born. Jesus was rejected in the city. He went outside the city and we are to go outside the city bearing the same reproach, brothers and sisters. Listen, it's that city that is mystery Babylon. It's that city that's called Sodom and Egypt. It's that city that's bringing the whole world into a Oblivion. Do you listen to what I'm saying to you? That city is idolatry. That city is wickedness. That city is that great mother of harlots. It's that whore of Babylon, brothers and sisters. And the whole world today is drinking of the wine of the fierceness of her wrath. Oh, yes. If you could only understand what really Zionism is. Hitler... Hitler called himself a son of God. He called himself an overcomer. And he said he was only finishing what Jesus began when he started to cast them out of the temple and turn over the tables. Hitler said, I'm just, I'm just finishing what Jesus started. He literally believed he was doing the will of God. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says they will think they're doing the will of God. See how subtle Satan is? He gets them to think they're actually doing the will of God. Oh, they are, but it's not the God of heaven. Amen. It's the God of this world, Satan. They're doing his bidding. They're doing his will. And what is the ultimate plan of Satan? Take as many souls to hell as he can. That's all he's got. That's his only recourse. What else does he have, people? In the end, when it's all said and done, those he took to hell, that's the only thing that he has to show whether he has beat God. And so there's this war going on. There's this battle going on over the souls of men, brothers and sisters. It's got nothing to do with Jew or Gentile. It has to do with the souls, the precious souls of men. And the devil doesn't want you to think about the soul being lost forever. Satan, he knows he knows the outcome. He knows where he's going to be. He knows he has, he has no deliverance. He knows he can't. He knows people. He even knows he has a short time when he comes down into the earth's earth having great wrath. He, he wants to take as many down with him as he can. Okay? Just like right now. Just like Cohen is trying to take down Donald Trump. Are you listening to me, people? That's what the devil does. He wants to take down as many as he can with him. How does he do that? He deceives. Just like he deceived a third of the angels in his rebellion. He took a third of the angels down with him. He's been going down ever since, folks. Listen, it's a matter of time, just a matter of time. Jesus, I beheld Satan as lightning. Don't rejoice because devils are subject unto you. Don't rejoice because devils are cast out when you use my name and my authority. He says, don't rejoice because of that. He said, rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now think about all those. Their names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Think about them. Think about them. When you look at whether it be Donald Trump, whether it be uh, anybody, their soul is precious. 
Jesus Christ. He hung on a tree. He shed his blood even for Donald Trump. Listen to me, people. This is not about flesh and blood. This is about the deception of the destroyer Satan that wants to take as many souls to hell as he can. And he tries to get the world pitted against one another. He tries to get people pitted against one another. Flesh and blood is not our enemy. Are you listening? We're not wrestling with flesh and blood here, people. Listen. Those like Donald Trump that have allowed Satan to overcome them, they become possessed. They're like serpents. They're like snakes. But even in that, Jesus, he even tried to reach the Pharisees. He even tried to reach the Pharisees. If he wasn't trying to reach the Pharisees, he never would have called them vipers or snakes. He would have never gave them a word. He never would have spoke. How many know when Jesus said to the Pharisees, you're snakes, he was offering them light. How many know that? They may not have liked what he said about them, but it was light because God can't speak darkness. It was truth that he was speaking to them. Oh, yes. Even Nicodemus, Jesus gave him all kinds of light. Amen. You must be born again. Nicodemus couldn't understand that light. But we know it had an effect on him because if you follow the scripture properly, you'll see that even Nicodemus, there was an effect of the truth on his life. Read it. Read it for yourself. He defended Jesus. Did you hear what I said? Nicodemus. That's right. I can't say he was born again. I can't say he was ever transformed, that he was ever converted. But the truth had an effect on him. Brothers and sisters, you've got to understand we're in a, we're in a war here. We're in a battle for the souls of men. And if Satan can get Brother Joseph or any of us, if he can get us fighting against people and get us thinking that we're fighting against an ideology, we're going to miss what we're really up against, what the real war is with, and that's the dragon. That's the serpent. That's, that's the devil. That's Satan. He's the real enemy. Are you listening, people? Remember this. War is the ultimate goal of the devil. When you see right now the devil inspiring Donald Trump to build up the military with trillions of dollars at the expense of the American people. When you see the fact that the interest rate is going up and not down right now in this country. When you see the fact that sanctions are being put on China. How's that going to make it better for the American people? I'm telling you there's war coming, people. I'm telling you there's a civil war coming. People are building their bunkers underground. There are preppers right now prepping. I'm telling you all war's getting ready to break out, folks. You have no idea what's getting ready to come because you don't take the time to read your Bibles. But I'm telling you there's a storm on its way, brothers and sisters, and I'm here to warn you. You better be ready for it. You better be building on the rock. You better to make sure that you've dug deep enough uh, to find the rock. Uh, hallelujah. You better know that Jesus Christ, uh, he's not just a man, but you better know that he is God in the flesh. That he, when he was on this earth, he's God in the flesh. He's the truth. He's the Christ. He's not in the flesh anymore, is he? He's in a glorified body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, people. Glorified. Just like he's offering to you and I. A glorified body. Don't be distracted by war. Rumors of war. Amen. Jesus said, when you hear of wars and rumors of war, don't, don't be distracted by that. Don't get nervous. The end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Listen, brothers and sisters. 
All these things must come to pass. All these things must be. The end's still not yet. Listen, Jesus said when you begin to see these things coming to pass, he said, then look up. That's what you and I should be doing right now. Looking up, straightening up. Amen. Glory to the Lamb, the time of our visitation. Glory to the Lamb, people. Our redemption is very close. Oh, hallelujah. While the church will sleep on, our redemption is very close. The Lord's going to take out the first fruits. They'll be caught up to God and to his throne. This will begin the harvest. And then the church will be gathered in. The barley harvest. In the, in, in the middle of the week. In the middle of weeks. In the middle of the week of harvest. Middle of that seven years. Hallelujah. And then after that barley is gathered in then the great tribulation will begin. And that's the wheat harvest. That's the wheat harvest. Are you listening, folks? God's going to gather in even during the wheat harvest. He's going to have those that are going to be beheaded. He's going to have the remnant in Israel. He's going to have 144,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 12,000 from each tribe. And he's going to gather all the wheat into his barn. And then he's going to burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then comes the grapes. The wrath of God. The fierceness of God's wrath. The wine press. The great trembling. Jerusalem dashing the nations to pieces as they try to come against that city. God is going to bring them down into that valley and he's going to deal with all the nations in that valley. Amen. Jesus is drawing them all to one place. He's setting up an ambush against them. Oh, I feel your presence, Jesus. If you ever knew, people, you, you think about the devil as the god of war. You think about men that follow Satan in war. How many know the Bible says Jesus? How many know the Bible says God is a man of war? There is no warrior like God. There is no one with such wisdom and that can with strategy. The strategy of the Lord, the wisdom, the discretion, the way our God wars, brothers and sisters. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise his name. How he used a, a young man, David, praise God, to bring down Goliath with a stone. Have you not read? Have you not read how God used Gideon and his army? Have you not read in your Bibles, brothers and sisters, how God wars? He uses the despised things. He uses the weak things. He uses the things that are high, lightly esteemed. He uses the things the world looks at and says, that's foolish, and God conquers. Hallelujah. The weakness of God is stronger than the strength of men. It's foolish for man to fight against God. Can you imagine the audacity? Can you imagine the irony? Can you imagine what goes through God's mind when he sees like these little bugs caught in a bug light, a zapper? Can you, can you just, in your in your finite mind, can you grasp the way God looks at man, the way he looks at this fools coming against him? And yet in all of that, he has compassion. 
Because he knows. He knows they're being deceived. He knows they're deceived. But folks, people are going to spend eternity in the lake of fire because they were deceived. Even the devil after a thousand years is going to go out to deceive the nations. People go to hell because of deception. They were deceived. Folks, our heart should be about souls. Our heart should be about, Lord, lead me to a soul. Lead me to a soul, Lord. Lead me to somebody that will listen to the truth. Time is running out, people. It's getting darker and darker. It's going to get harder and harder to reach somebody. It's not going to get easy. It's going to get harder. You think because destruction upon destruction is coming on the earth, it's going to get easier because people will turn to God. No, it's going to get harder. They're going to harden their hearts. Just like Egypt, just like Pharaoh, we have a small window of time. That's what we have left. I don't even know, you know, the Bible says the door is open. But I don't even know if we, the door's, I know the door's closing. But, but we have this, we have this, they call it a window of time. But really we have a door of time, right? Because the door, Jesus is the door, and it's closing. How many know when that door finally closes, the light doesn't shine anymore? We've got some, a little bit of light still shining through that door, through the crack of the door, brothers and sisters. We've got to get some more folks in the door before the door closes. So many are going to stand without. Lord, Lord, let me in. Let me in. I don't know who you are. Who are you? Let me in, Lord. I don't know you. You better make sure that Jesus knows you. (laughs) Make sure. Make sure that he knows you. And make sure you know him. That was the cry of the apostle's heart. Oh, that I might know him. Not know of him, but you better make sure you know him. That was the word used in the Old Testament for intimacy. Amen? We better know him. Not just know of him. You better know without any shadow of a doubt. Amen. You look at the scripture, you'll see the disciples, they saw glimpses. Amen. They caught glimpses of him. They got to see rays of the sun. Peter experienced some rays of the sun. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. But the same one we hear saying, I don't know the man. And then all the disciples, including John, went fishing. And Jesus got up. Hallelujah. Resurrected. Here they are out there on that boat, fishing trying to forget Jesus, trying to forget the whole thing for the last three years that what they experienced, all of it, just trying to forget it. I'm going back to fishing. We're going with you. All of a sudden they hear a voice early in the morning. He sat there all night watching them toiling. That's how patient our Lord is. All night long he's been sitting there In the dark, the light of the world, sitting there in the dark. 
He'd had that fire burning all that night and they were out there toiling. Finally, the sun starts coming up in the morning and there's coals. All that's left is coals. And he's already cooking breakfast. He didn't go fishing. He didn't cast in a hook or a net. He's the Lord. He is the Lord. He created the fish. He created the bread. He created you and I, brothers and sisters. He created them. He created the water that they were, the boat was on. He created the wood that the boat was made of. And he's sitting on the shore there. And all of a sudden, they hear this voice. Little boys. Little boys. It's what Jesus is saying to the church right now. You're not growing up. Little boys. He's not calling them men. He's calling them little boys. That's what the Lord is saying right now in this hour. Little boys, have you caught anything? We've caught nothing. Cast the net on the right side. Stop looking on the left. And not on the right side of the Republican or the right side of politics. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the right hand of his righteousness. Cast the net on the right side. His righteousness. And John says, wait a minute. He was putting it together. I know that voice. That's familiar. And I remember that voice saying that same thing one day. They're putting it, they're putting it, John, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait. It's him. It's the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Peter starts taking his fish's coat, putting it around him, tightening it. He started getting naked. Started getting loose out there on that boat. Get some sunshine, you know. Now he's tightening that coat. God's holy. Amen. He's holy. Tighten up that coat. Jumps in the water. He's swimming to Jesus, not away from Jesus. The one that said, I don't even know the man. The one that went out and wept bitterly when Jesus looked upon him. You'd think that Peter would be running away. But how many know Jesus didn't come to condemn? He didn't come to destroy. He's drawing them to himself. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Jesus was lifted up, folks. Not to drive people away, but to draw them to himself. Peter is coming to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He called them little boys. But how many know something happened on that day of Pentecost? Oh, hallelujah. They weren't little boys anymore. That's why today the church is so immature because they haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. They haven't been filled with the Spirit. They depend on the doctrines of men instead of the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. Instead of listening to the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you have no need that any man teach you. The same anointing will teach you all things. Anybody that listens to this broadcast, you shouldn't be here to hear something for the first time. You should be here to hear confirmation of what the Spirit's already showing you. I'm not here to give you the first word. I'm here... To help you to understand, if or if not, you are on the narrow way that leads to life. To help you stay on track. I'm just a guide, brothers and sisters. Oh, hallelujah. Just a guide. 
Oh yeah, I may not have fluttering wings. The word angel in the scripture is messenger. Praise the Lord. God gave us to the body of Christ as gifts. Amen. I didn't call myself. I was sent by God, brothers and sisters. I didn't give myself this platform. Satan's done everything he can to destroy it. Satan's done everything he can to stop it. But God is holding him at bay. Oh yes, he's holding him at bay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the greatest responsibility that you and I have as witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ is the souls of men. Let's not be confused. Let's not get distracted. Pray and ask God to use you to lead a soul to Him, to give the truth to somebody. When it's all said and done, that's all you're really going to have to show to the Lord. Bring the fish to Jesus. Peter was bringing the fish to Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring them to Jesus. Don't try to clean them. Just bring the fish to Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, follow me. I'll make you fishes of men. That's what we're supposed to be, fishing for men. This is all about souls. This is soul winning, folks. Soul winning. The church is for God. And the reason why the church doesn't even care about the souls of this world is because they don't care about their own soul. They don't care about their soul enough to even study God's word, to be diligent, to rightly divide the word of truth. How many are really care about your soul how many really really care about your soul that you're not going to be deceived that you're not going to just lightly study God's word but you're going to make sure you know the truth you're not going to wake up from a dream people if you don't Know the truth. If you're not saved, if you're not free, saved, your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to lift up your eyes from a dream or a nightmare. You're going to lift up your eyes in hell. The rich man lifted up his eyes in hell. And he wasn't even thinking about himself in hell except one drop of water for his tongue to cool his tongue. But he wasn't thinking about himself. He, he was now a soul winner, wasn't he? What did he say in hell? They'll listen. Send Lazarus to him. He didn't know Lazarus was already dead, carried into the bosom of Abraham. So he's thinking, send Lazarus. Send that one that was at my gate that begged and I wouldn't give him even crumbs. Send him. They'll listen. But God says, no, they won't even, they won't listen. He said, they won't believe. Even though one rose from the dead, they won't believe. Jesus rose from the dead. And many of you still don't believe. Brothers and sisters, if you really are saved, you're really born again. If it's a real ministry that you're a part of, it's going to be about souls. It's not going to be about a show. It's not going to be about money. It's not going to be about fame and fortune. It's going to be about souls. And if you go look at the book of Revelation, you find that it's last on the list when it comes to man. The souls of men last on the list. But look at that from another perspective. It's first on the list. Just like when you look at the armor in the book of Ephesians, prayer looks like it's last on the list, but yet it's first. Hallelujah. It's all about perspective. Do you look from the top down or do you look from the bottom up? Hallelujah. Get down low enough, humble yourself, and you'll start seeing from the bottom up. Look up. Amen. Don't look down. Don't look from the top down. You can't see the top anyway. Amen? 
Jacob, the ladder was set up. And he saw, he looked up. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. He saw what he could see. Amen. But he couldn't see all the way to the New Testament where Jesus was the one that was at the top of the ladder. In the Old Testament, Jacob was looking up the ladder. But he couldn't see that one, amen, that thousands of years later would be the one angels were ascending and descending upon. Oh, I feel your presence, Jesus. Jacob looked up. He saw the angels ascending and descending upon the ladder, but he didn't see what was at the top of the ladder. Amen? That wasn't until the New Testament. Oh, hallelujah. Look up. Look past. Look up. Look beyond. Hallelujah. Look beyond. Look even beyond the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Stephen said, I see him. I see him. I see him. Even Paul the Apostle didn't see him. But Stephen said, I see him. The heavens is open. I see him. He's standing at the Father's right side. Oh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Are you going to stand at the right hand of his power? Are you going to stand at his right hand? Or will you be one of those on the left? In this world, even the right's becoming the left. And the left's becoming the right. They're so mixed up and confused, they don't know what side they're on. You know why? Because morality. Because morality is at an all-time low. Immorality, corruption... It's not about sides anymore. Get rid of democracy, what they call democracy, what used to be the republic. Get rid of democracy, destroy democracy, and bring in a new world order. Get rid of the local governments or the state or the country. Get rid of all the small governments and replace them with one big government. Who do you think's behind that? Satanists. Satan is setting up his kingdom on this earth. He's getting ready to come. He knows. He knows he has a short time. When he comes down, he's going to set up himself in the temple, showing himself he's God. Oh, yeah. Little boys, have you brought a soul to Jesus? Little boys, have you brought one soul to Jesus? Hallelujah. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Do you really love me? Prove it. Prove you love me more than these. You said you love me more than all. You said, though all forsake you, I won't. Prove it, Peter. Prove to me you love me. How do I prove it to you, Lord? Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. But give double to the lambs. Feed my lambs so they'll crawl. Hallelujah. That's what we do in this ministry. We feed the lambs and the sheep. Oh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel your presence, Lord. There's somebody out there listening, God. There's somebody, God, that's going to hear the truth. There's somebody, Lord, that's going to receive the truth. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was fasting years ago on a 10-day fast. The Lord had called me to a fast. And the Lord said to me, many 
shall come to hear my words at your mouth. He said, many shall be astounded by what I'm going to do with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, people. Time is short. Only what's done for Christ is going to matter. Everything else is going to pass away. It's all going to pass away. Only what's done for Jesus is going to last. Only what's done for Jesus is going to be rewarded. Everything else is going to pass away. If you can continue to be lukewarm after this message, you're going to end up in the great tribulation. You're going to end up in the tribulation. At least the tribulation. Sleeping until the midnight hour. If you think you're just going to wait and wake up when you're ready, you'll never wake up. You may be one of those that lifts up their eyes in hell. I'm pouring out my heart to you people. I'm, I'm, I'm not holding back. I said to the Lord one day, I said, Lord, I gave too much, didn't I? You know what he said to me? He said, you didn't give enough. You didn't give enough. Give it all, brother. Give it. Give it all, son. Give it all. Empty out everything I give you. Pour it out to them. I'll hold nothing back. Hallelujah. I recently had the serpent visited me through one of the comments left in one of the messages don't give everything you got hold on to some of it that was the devil don't give it all but my Lord and Savior is telling me different he's saying spare not pour it out lift up your voice spare not hallelujah souls are going to hell souls are slipping through our fingers. Seems like everything's more important than a soul. Who was it that said, give me souls or I die? What happened to that burden? Amen? Give me Scotland or I die? What happened to that burden? Praise God. What happened to the burden where a man of God sitting at a table with his family having dinner and asks to be excused and goes out and leads someone to the Lord and comes back in and finishes his meal? Hallelujah. Every day they pass me by, people filled with care. Laughter hides their silent cry. Only Jesus hears. People need the Lord. Amen? When will we realize that we must give our lives? People need the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, people. Soul winners. He that winneth souls is wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah.